Well, I want to welcome uh, Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu and the entire Israeli delegation back uh, to the White House, back to the Oval Office. Uh, this visit obviously <laughs> comes at a critical time. Uh, we are seeing uh, incredible changes uh, that are taking place in the Middle East uh, and in North Africa. Uh, we are seeing uh, the terrible uh, bloodshed that's uh, going on in Syria. Uh, the democratic transition that's taking place in Egypt. Uh, and in the midst of this, uh, we have uh, an island of democracy uh, and one of our greatest allies in Israel. Uh, as I've said repeatedly, the bond between our two countries is unbreakable. Uh, my personal commitment, uh, a commitment that is consistent with uh, the history of other occupants of this Oval Office, uh, our commitment to the security of Israel uh, is rock solid. And as I've said to the Prime Minister uh, in every single one of our meetings, uh, the United States will always have Israel's back when it comes to Israel's security. Uh, this is a bond that is based not only uh, on our mutual security interests and economic interests, uh, but is also uh, based on common values and the incredible people-to-people -people context that we have uh, between our two countries. Uh, during the course of this meeting, we'll talk about uh, the regional uh, issues that are taking place, uh, and uh, I look forward to the Prime Minister sharing uh, with me his ideas about how we can uh, increase the prospects of peace and security in the region. Uh, we will discuss uh, the uh, issues that continue to uh, be a focus of not only our uh, foreign policy, but also uh, the Prime Minister's, how we can uh, potentially uh, bring about a calmer uh, set of discussions between uh, the Israelis and the Palestinians and arrive at uh, a, a peaceful resolution to that long-standing conflict. Uh, it is a very difficult thing to do uh, in light of uh, the context right now, but uh, I know that the Prime Minister remains committed to trying to achieve that. Uh, and obviously, a large topic of conversation will be Iran, uh, which uh, I devoted a lot of time to in my speech to APAC yesterday, and I know that the Prime Minister has been uh, focused on for a long period of time. Uh, let me just reiterate a couple of points on that. Number one, uh, we all know that it's unacceptable from Israel's perspective to have a country with a nuclear weapon that has called for the uh, destruction of Israel. Uh, but as I emphasized yesterday, it is profoundly in the United States' interest as well to prevent uh, Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon. Uh, we do not want to see a nuclear arms race in one of the most volatile regions in the world. Uh, we do not want uh, uh, the possibility of a nuclear weapon falling into the hands of terrorists. Uh, and we do not want a regime that has been a state sponsor of terrorism uh, being able to uh, feel that it can act uh, even more aggressively or with impunity uh, as a consequence of uh, its uh, nuclear power. That's why we have worked so diligently to set up the most crippling sanctions ever uh, with respect to Iran. Uh, we do believe that there is still a window uh, that allows for a diplomatic resolution to this issue, uh, but ultimately the Iranians' uh, uh, regime has to make a decision uh, to move in that direction, a decision that they have not made thus far. Uh, and as I emphasized, uh, even as we will continue on the diplomatic front, we will continue to uh, uh, tighten pressure when it comes to uh, sanctions. Uh, I reserve all options. Uh, and my policy here is not going to be uh, one of containment. My policy is prevention of Iran obtaining nuclear weapons. Uh, and uh, as I indicated yesterday in my speech, when I say all options are at the table, I mean it. Uh, having said that, I know that both the Prime Minister and I prefer uh, to resolve this diplomatically. Uh, we understand uh, the costs uh, of any military action. Uh, and uh, I want to uh, assure both the American people and the Israeli people that uh, we are in constant and close consultation. Uh, I think the uh, levels of uh, coordination and consultation between our militaries and our intelligence, uh, not just on this issue, but on a broad range of issues, uh, has been unprecedented. And uh, I intend to make sure that that continues uh, during what will be 
uh, a series of difficult months, uh, I suspect, uh, in 2012. So, Prime Minister, we, uh, we welcome you, and we appreciate very much uh, the, the friendship of the Israeli people. Uh, you can count on that uh, friendship always being reciprocated from uh, the United States. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, thank you for those kind words, and thank you, too, for that strong speech yesterday. Uh, and I want to thank you also for the uh, warm hospitality that you've shown me and my delegation. The uh, alliance between our two countries is deeply appreciated uh, by me and by everyone in Israel. And I think that, as you said, when Americans look around the Middle East today, they see one reliable, stable, faithful ally of the United States. And that's the democracy of Israel. Americans know that Israel and the United States share common values, that we defend common interests, that we face common enemies. Iran's leaders know that too. You know, for them, you're the great Satan, we're the little Satan. For them, we are you and you are us. And you know something, Mr. President? At least on this last point, I think they're right. We are you, and you are us. We're together. So if there's one thing that stands out clearly in the Middle East today, it's that Israel and America stand together. Uh, I, I think that uh, uh, above and beyond that are two principles, long-standing principles of American policy that you reiterated yesterday in your speech that Israel must have the ability always to defend itself by itself against any threat. And that when it comes to Israel's security, Israel has the right, the sovereign right, to make its own decisions. Uh, I believe that's why you appreciate, Mr. President, that Israel must reserve the right to defend itself. And after all, that's, that's the very purpose of the Jewish state, to restore to the Jewish people control over our destiny. And that's why my supreme responsibility as Prime Minister of Israel is to ensure that Israel remains the master of its fate. So I thank you very much, Mr. President, for your friendship. And I look forward to our discussions. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much.